welcome to the Theatre Pitch Podcast. I'm Jem, this is Joe. Hey, yep. And this is Sean. Hey, yep. I, I like the way of keeping you guys on your toes every week. There's that tension that I can feel and it's like, what, who's she going to come to first? Um, but welcome to the Theatre Pitch Podcast. This is the podcast where we take a random online encyclopedia article and each of us as theatre makers come up with a pitch of how we would stage that article as a theatre show and then right at the end we take those three ideas and we smush them together to equal it out and find a fourth idea and then you guys listening and watching at home get to then pick your favourite or pitch a better one. So I think that's the best introduction I've done yet. I think that's the first time you've done it in one go. <laughs> I think it might be the best. Well done you. I've, I'm winning at this one. Um, but saying that, I'm about to pitch something for the article this week, which is Kyle Biederman. Joe, over to you and your wonderful radio voice to tell us about Kyle Biederman. Biederman. Well, you might be wondering, who is Kyle Biederman? <laughs> Kenneth Kyle Biederman, otherwise known as Kyle Biederman, born April the 30th, 1959, is a Republican member of the Texas House of Representatives for District 73. District 73 encompasses Comal, Gillespie, and Kendall counties in the eastern portion of Texas Hill County. Biedemann also operates and owns a hardware store within the district. Am I allowed to say the next G- bit, G- Jim? Give the, give the next one, because, you know. Biedemann received public criticism for his Halloween outfit back in 2008 of Gay Hitler, pictures of which were published by local media. Gay Hitler, for anyone who doesn't know, is a reference to a... Chris, I, I can't remember. Yeah, it was Chris Catan character back from Saturday Night Live around 2004, I think. Mm-hmm. But just for full clearance, it was not his idea. It was a reference to a Saturday Night Live character and not a recurring one. Yes. So he was at an SNL party, I believe. But he is a Republican um, member of the House of Representatives and he's a landslide winner. So interesting bloke. Um, and I'm quite nervous as to as to what Joe's gonna come out with. Uh, I know. How, how did everybody fa- find it? I found it difficult, actually. You'll be unsurprised here. Easiest I've ever had it. <laughs> I found I found um, it a bit soul destroying. Yeah, I kind of I was just like, oh, this could be quite interesting, and then I started reading into his political, like how he's voted, and I was like, okay, let's try and not go for the obvious here. Um, but it was a good creative test. Yeah, I too looked into Kyle Biederman's record, and as a result, I don't want to talk about him anymore. <laughs> so I'm not. There's a glimmer so, of hope. Um, so, right, well, let's go on to Joe's, Joe's pitch then. Yeah, so you may remember a moment ago, I referenced that his district that he represents encompasses Gillespie County in Texas. Mm-hmm. Gillespie County... Within it contains an area known as Fredericksburg, which interestingly was the site of a battle and also a major Unionist stronghold during the Civil War. Yeah. Which is a bold move for anywhere in Texas to be Unionist. Um, Yeah. And so my idea is I want to examine the difference between modern politics and the way that um, it also was inspired by earlier I was listening to the absolutely fantastic concept album by the band Titus Andronicus called The Monitor, which, uh, if people at home haven't listened to it, it's um, a a kind of garage punk concept album about the Civil War with no references to actual battles of the Civil War. But there is one song in the middle of it called Four Score and Seven, obviously in reference to the Gettysburg Address, in which there's a line in it saying about how it's been 10,000 years of us against them. And Mm -hmm. I want to examine the notions of the two-party system and also this very literal attitude of us against them and how it occurs in American politics especially. Where at the moment, we can see this actually with the way that there's this thing of trying to take down Kyle Biederman, not for his record, but for a Halloween party outfit. Yeah. Or in the way that just a few weeks ago... I uh, I think it's just a few weeks ago, depending on when this came out. Of whichever uh, part, the the um, Canada's Next Top Model episode of Theatre Pitch will is already out, isn't it? Yes. 
Yeah, so you may notice in that my first thing I comment on was Trudeau's history of blackface. And it's this notion of both sides sniping at each other and ignoring the major issues in the hopes of getting a one-upmanship by performative politics instead of literal, actual political negotiation or in any way trying to find common ground or reach any consensus other than, well, we are the left, so we are correct because we're more right than you. And we are the right, we are correct because we're right and more right than you in the sense of being correct, not in the sense of being right wing. Mm -hmm. So my idea is that actually we take this album and it's these stages set up almost as if we are at the set of the House of Representatives is staged and said as the scene of a civil war battle. Okay. In the center of it, in the um, we've got the we've actually got a punk band who are going to be playing throughout the night various hits from the Monitor, and we're going to weave through this actual letters sent by people back from the Civil War, um, mixed in with speeches from both sides, and the idea is examining how um, the the band essentially play the part of the common people caught in the crossfire between this unnecessary conflict between two sides that purely have decided that they disagree because one side is Republican, one side is Democrat, but never bothering to think what those two labels mean other than we are not them. Ooh, and okay. so um, I had considered potentially throughout it having it where they're gradually encroaching closer, so the further they get to the center... Not so much the more their ideas begin to cross, but the more the message gets muddied the closer they get to the center as it becomes more just about winning and less about actually having an ideological point that's opposite to the other side. Yeah. Okay. I'm just taking... Yeah, I, didn't th I bet you didn't think that I'd come up with an idea that didn't directly um, attack any political groups and just attacked everybody instead. Or indeed, like that, the notion that, of politics. I feel like that is the, like, that's the true Joe way, is like, I'm not on anyone's side, I'm against you all. <laughs> oh, oh no, I have a side, it's he just neither of them. definitely has a side. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can get into my side, but it will be a much longer, less fun podcast. <laughs> I think the fact, I think the fact that there was like, when he was describing the left, and then he was describing the right, and there was like a big hesitation when he was trying to work out why they would be right. I think that's very clear. Um, my wet side goes yeah, on. I mean, I make no make no bones about hiding the fact that I am a firmly left wing person in terms of my beliefs. At the same time, I am not pro the modern Democrat Party. Well, I mean, I read something. It's a completely different podcast, but I read something about how the modern Democratic Party is more centrist than anything compared to the Repub Republicans, who are just further and further to the yeah. other side so it's well, it's it's, it's, that's it's a whole also different podcast. it's this kind of like performative liberalism as i say it's um it's like uh have both of you seen the clip where it was trump was giving the state of the union and nancy pelosi was basically making faces behind him and yeah. refusing yeah. to clap and giving him a thumbs down and yeah. it's like no don't try for point scoring. Don't try just making a show of being like, oh, isn't Trump a loony? No, actually pose a firm and accurate reason why you are the opposition. Pose a reason for it. Be a politician. Do your fucking job. Be a politician, not a kindergarten school kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I get that. I like that, So that, that is the essential message of it is also, you're politicians. You're not fighting in a war. Stop treating it like you're the same as the soldiers who fought for your freedom. Just get on with it and just do your fucking job. That is the message yeah. of my show. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It feels like it, it echoes. So is it... Because it, it, it's echoing quite a lot of what Hamilton does for the modern era as well. As much as it's the story of Hamilton, there's a lot of further subtext mm. in that. Is yeah. it a straight play or is it... But you've got this musical element. Is it a musical or is it a play with music? It is um, It is a play with music. Okay, cool. So um, there is one point during the aforementioned song, Four Score and Seven, where both sides join in. 
which is just one point where there's a rallying cry towards the end of the song of it's us against them, it's us against them, it's us against them, and they're winning. Mm. In which I want both sides seeing the same thing because it's this attitude that both sides believe that the it's the other side who started it and it is the other side who is trying to get the upper hand, which is why they have to fight back. Okay. And about these these empty gestures of positioning the other side as the enemy purely mm. because it's easier to pose reasons why you aren't someone and why you should be um, a leader because you're not them than it is to pose a reason why you should be a leader because of anything you've done. Yeah. Which is actually, that links oddly. When you were when you were pitching, I was like, oh no, he's pitching my show, but in a different context, which I think you kind of have. Um, I just took a really, really artsier route. Um, so should I go next and sort of swap, swap it up so Sean gets to close the show? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that was my... a great segue. Also, can can I just say yes. one thing that I really picked up? Uh-huh. Gemma said kindergarten. I did say kindergarten. She's right. really getting into the American spirit. Yeah, I was about to right. say, we're talking about American politics here. My my head my head's switched to. Yeah, so I was listening to this album uh, while I ate a PBJ on the sidewalk, <laughs> and then um, my my MP3 player died, so I threw it in the cat trash can. Um, and uh, come on. Then just... We're a truly international people, aren't we? We can embrace um, different. No, just... Yeah, I know, I know, but like, it's a nu- it's nursery, and yeah. you know what I mean. Also, well, I would have said preschool. We recognise other cultures, as long as they but recognise that the recognise should be spelt with an S. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pitch now, uh, and hopefully, I, I won't I won't use any language that is too Americanized for you guys whilst they talk about the American political system. Um, yeah, just don't pull her in without yeah. a U. It's I a gamble, actually... not a forward roll. <laughs> my <laughs> my pitch was very much. It's actually not about the political system in America. Um, it's it's more about this idea of the gay Hitler. Um, because I thought I'm just gonna run straight into that one. But my my show. Because I was thinking about this idea of 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 politics and how theatre is inherently political, but uh, after getting into a conversation about this with um some one of my friends, I was just like, no, you're you're misinterpreting my point. It's not political as in uh, voted politics, parliament politics. Theatre is political because of all of the other politics about gender and about representation and all of these different things. Theatre is inherently polit- political about that. And then I thought, you know what, as much as I'm trying to avoid gay Hitler, I, you know, as anybody would want to, I'm going to run straight at gay Hitler because theatre is inherently political. And so my idea was very much looking at this idea of, let's be honest, the reason this guy has a Wikipedia page that's longer than three sentences is because of the gay Hitler thing. Gay, like, when you pull a stunt like that, it is quite... It, make, it makes the local media, it makes the national media or the international media. And then I thought, you know, you've got so many people like Prince Harry or Trudeau or all of these people who have had a misguided... Um, uh, impulse to dress up as something that's really dumb. Um, and so I wanted to really examine this idea of how the media and how we, very similar to Joe's argument, is how we as a people are trained by the media to latch on to uh, these petty arguments and these things that you're, you're, you're judging somebody by... Um, one thing that they did rather than their intention and rather than them as a whole person you know so you sit here and you kind of go oh gay hitler you're a horrible person but then my friend is jewish and turned around and went i wouldn't be offended by that i wasn't offended by harry dressing up as hitler you know hitler's part of the history but the intention behind it was probably you know and and my friend turned around and said if it is if they're turning around and dressing up as Hitler in support of that and in support of Nazism, got a problem with that. But if they're just dressing up as it because they wanted to make a splash, then they're idiots and I don't care. And so that kind of got me thinking about 
All right, let's take let's make a show, and we're gonna go down the really artsy route of the audience are it's it's like a performance installation where the audience are introduced to um a series of people as their two counterparts their meteorized counterparts so the guy dressed as gay hitler harry dressed as hitler uh, Trudeau and Blackface, all of these. You're introduced to these people. But then you're also introduced to, on an anonymous level, another group of people who are more, in, are more the reality, are more the intention. You know, so pulling real statements from people and their intentions behind why they did these things. Because I did, I, I, I went a bit further than this article and I read up as to why Biederman did this and he turned around and said, you know, it was purely pulling up a, a, an interesting character that he enjoyed on SNL. Um, so it was actually quite an innocent motive that just wasn't f thought through. So it's kind of this installation where you um, encounter the reality and the full 360 truth of, of situations versus what the media shows you. It's kind of an examination of how the media portrays things as well um it, when I, I was thinking if I was to direct it I'd really really want to be working with um a really good stenographer and set guy to turn around and set or set girl to turn around and actually design this as a really um intricate piece of artwork as well um and using digital art as well because we've gotten really into that but yeah, it was kind of just one of those things that was exa examining that and it was very performancey, sort of performance arty, uh, rather than straight up theatre. But it's, it's looking at this idea of how, how the media and how we, even in our everyday friendships, turn around and with the people that are in our lives, we turn around and go, oh, that person posted that thing or did that thing that's really misguided, but we immediately want to demonize them, we immediately want to categorize them with that, and the, the, the effort to stop, think, and consider somebody's actual true intentions and question your knee-jerk reaction, that's not something a lot of people, I think, have, especially at the moment. So it's a case of, yeah, it's kind of, I wanted to prompt people to really think about that whole stop, catch, really examine what's actually happening here and the truth of the situation rather than going, you're a bastard um, because you did X, Y, Z or you said what X, Y, Z. And it goes down to even, you know, bringing up Jimmy Carr's jokes and uh, so many comedians who have fallen foul of the media because they've taken things out of context, you know. So, yeah, that's kind of, that was the idea, but it was interactive digital art um, as a series of faces with the actions and then anon a a a anonymous truths behind it and kind of bringing those together to, to, to reveal and say, no, this is actually the truth of the situation so that you kind of confront the audience with going, you judged that person, but you, ju you didn't judge them fairly and you th everybody thinks that they're fair, but you're not being fair. So yeah. I have <laughs> got something to say. Yeah. Unless you're in The Sound of Musical or you're the director in The Producers, yeah. I can't think of a single reason, good reason, why you'd dress up as a Nazi. Even even if I know the person, it, it, still, it still comes across I, as like I you're either a dickhead or you're a twat. I 100% and... agree with you. But it's one of those things of like, all of us are a little bit of a dick, but it's also one of those things of like, have you just not thought that through? And then if they have thought that through and still thought it was okay, you know, it's one of those like, why, why don't, why do you think it's okay? Is it because you've never been exposed to the harm that that has done? You know, we're currently in a time of revolution all about that, you know, about this, this thing that we you don't think further than your own nose most of the time because you you don't you you may never have been ex exposed to the actual dickishness. <laughs> so I think your idea I... would work, but I think you're coming at it in the wrong way. I think instead of showing, because I because I think with some of the people it could work, but I, I think with some of them, like dressing up as 
Nazis or Hitler, it's yeah. going to get problematic where you're trying to say, oh, they haven't thought it through. It's they're, they're this sort of person, but they haven't thought it through. I think you should be... When you was on about the media, and yeah. you're seeing this one... Um, Per, one, the way they're represented and the way yeah. they really are. I think you're missing a trick with this show where it should be. You, you, you know where people are taking down statues at the minute because, you know, you know yeah. they're historical figures and sometimes some people shouldn't be idolised, celebrated, celebrated way, yeah. in a way. Yes, I think slavers I, shouldn't literally be put on a yeah. pedestal. Yes. Well, I, th- I think with I think with the the slavers, I think they're the easy ones to take down because they're like they made money out of being slaves. They're like they shouldn't have a statue. But I think people with like I think some other people where it's a bit more problematic. Like they've done loads of good things, but they've done loads of bad things. Yeah. But that was in the context of you know society. What was society like then? Yeah. I think you should your show should be they you see what what the person has be has become the image of the person yeah um so like i mean i'm i'm gonna say it so take someone like churchill yes churchill is like rep is like the image of victory yes um winning the war not giving up um great britain you know he's the he's he's idolized now is that person that's idolized is that the real person and you could i'm not saying do it with churchill but i'm using him as an example you could use people in history that have been idolized and you know some of what it is has been like oh yeah ignore Mm. that bit i feel like you should be doing something like that where you're um addressing certain certain people that are celebrated yeah. Well, Instead well of if like... we want to take other examples, yeah, you can always look at, for instance, um, an example such as uh, Roald Dahl, who said in interviews that he thought there was some section of the uh, um, Jewish temperament or personality that um, leads them to be picked on and where he could almost understand why it would be the Jews that Hitler would choose. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. You don't get that. We in his haven't books. forgotten Roll. You don't get that in yeah. his books. We don't forget. Yeah, you don't get that through his books. No, I, I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's an idea that could be quite interesting to go kind of further than the idea of just you know the gay Hitler edge and even the 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 the, the, the historical figures edge. Because to I me, mean, you could have that same argument with Churchill. You can have that argument about Obama just because they're in a position where they have to do bad things in order to get good things for some people but i think you can even turn around and if you're focusing on the media you can even turn around and say like okay there are um there are some celebrities who are advocating for uh good mental health and for for people to you know like the i way campaign but they're getting absolute hatred from some people in the media because it's this interpretation of an out of, of, of an out out of context statement um and you know one of those things of like okay well how had looking through the lens of whatever these these things have become when they outgrow themselves you know can i just ask um i i know i'm gonna somewhat regret this because you described it as an artsy piece but is there a plot and if not what happens in the actual play there's not a plot. I think there's an there's an experience. So for me, the experience is that you are, you cut <laughs> Sean's rolling his eyes in quite a big way. <laughs> um, yes, that is the most typical gem thing I could have said. Um, I think it's the case of you come as the audience. You go through the experience of coming into contact with something that you agree with, like Churchill is amazing or, you know, whatever it is that we're try- deciding to choose. You know, you're, you're coming into so- you're, you're coming at something that you agree with. It's boosted up so that you sit there and think, yeah, this is like, I'm right, of course. Like, and you get that, you rile people up in that same way that the media frenzies us. And then confront them with that, with the truth and with the, the, the conflict, the, the inherent conflict of being human, um, and then have them walk away kind of 
questioning either why that happened or you know just kind of instilling that idea of think first before you retweet you know think first before you judge a book by its cover um you know do a little dig a little deeper check the date on an article no no i i think the opposite i think you should be doing the opposite i think your show should be like um you know you're saying don't judge a book by its cover i'm 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 saying your show should be like uh this is the person oh (gasps) this is what this is what it is but then you're like the alter ego is you actually like opening the book and like so, let's get so inside. You, so you want to break their heart? I want. I'm just. I'm. I'm just saying because your original idea was, here. Here's a person in a silly costume and they've made a mistake. And but this is this is this is who they actually are and this is yeah. why they may have made that mistake. And I I don't like that because you're sort of like they they made a you're mistake. Apolo- and you're like, I get it. It's quite you're apologetic. Apologi- where apologi- I think that would apologistic. work. That idea yeah. works, but you need to. Instead of like, oh, this is the mistake. You should be more like, this. Look, look at this person. It's, he's really cool. Oh, he's the best. Oh, blah 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 blah. And you'll be yeah. like, mm, don't be fooled. You know, why yeah. not? Being like, oh, isn't it cool? Winston Churchill stopped the war. Good guy. Oh, the same Winston Churchill who said loads of racist things and expressed a certain admiration for Hitler. Yeah, I think oh, it, that, that I, the same man, yeah, I think that might have more of an impact without being diluted by, you know, the critique of it being quite apologetic on behalf of everybody. Because the main thing that I want people to come out of it feeling and thinking is, you know, it, that idea that not everything is chalked up to first impressions and think further than your own nose. Yeah. Hmm. You should Just be... To... Just to do the old Paxman technique for a second, to apologise for this, but I do want to ask again, what actually happens in it? Because you've said what you want people to go away thinking. It's and an kind experience. Of what you want them, it's an experience. It's an experience. It's an experience. Story. <laughs> but you've told us what you want people to experience, but you haven't told us how that actually happens. Well, currently, what Sean's just blown the happen. original de- idea out the water by turning it on its head. So I'm going to make <laughs> shit up right now. Um, Good. I think, th- like, I think it's a, it's a big, it's an installation. It's in a gallery. It's not sit down theatre. Um, you are, you encounter through. I, I'd say interactive art. I'm going to stick with that. So it would be um, much encounter... better to describe this as performance art than it would be as straight theatre. Yeah, it's definitely more performance art. It's oh. an experience. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to just refer to that soundbite. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm... so you're pitching us the Jimi Hendrix experience. Got it. Yes, I am, I am the Jimi Hendrix, and it is the Jimi Hendrix. Not to, not to be confused with the Jimi Hendrix, because that's a whole different show. <laughs> okay so sean do you want to pick up and blow blow my um, idea out the water even more but with your own one this time i'm so excited no uh, <laughs> i mean don't don't be um i'm I mean, so I'm, excited I'm, uh, you shouldn't be um so i um saw the article and i read the article and unlike you guys I don't know if you've noticed during all of these, I get quite literal with the article. I try and like do the article, not like, yes. oh, the article means this. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get over to here. Or I try and do literally what the podcast says and do it. That's why I struggled so much with the river one. <laughs> okay. Agreed. So um, I was reading it. And then as soon as I saw Gay Hitler, I was like, oh. I could do a musical. But then I realised, oh, someone already beat, beat me to it. Mel Brooks. And, yeah, I was about to say, and it's called The Sound of Music, Cabaret, The Producers. I was thinking Producers. Producers is where you literally have a gay Hitler. Um, <laughs> in there, in there, well, you know, if no one's ever seen or heard of The Producers, it's it's not gay Hitler. It's, um, I'm just going to, you might as well kill kill some time. Um, it's about producers trying to make the worst show in the show world ever. so they could take the money that the backers have given because it gets cancelled the next night. 
and it centers around the worst play they could find, which was called Springtime for Hitler. And the director makes it as camp as you can. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's actually really good. Um, but there's a cool idea. line. There's a cool line that's called "I was born in Dusseldorf, and that is why they call me Rolf." Um, <laughs> so I, I was reading the article and I got nothing. And I was reading the article again and I got really sad. Like it's like at this like I'm like I know we don't reference the outside world, and that's probably why at no point in the podcast have I ever. Have I ever referenced like Liverpool winning the league? So we've never really <laughs> referenced like what's going on in the world. So like, but we all know like, there's a pandemic, and it's a, it's a really like it's a really bad time. And I didn't really want to waste my time on this clearly like, you know, bad person. So I didn't, and um, I'm going to be all controversial here. And I haven't thought of a show, so I thought, <laughs> yeah. So I thought instead of instead of wasting my time on this guy, I went online and I thought, well, I'm going to, you know, for my for our six listeners, I thought I might give them some, you know, some cool information because, you know, theatres aren't doing well at the minute. So I thought I had a look and I found this really cool website that's just called, oh, I've turned the Wi-Fi off. That was a bad idea. Is that, is, 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 is that and what it's the website's called? called? It's called, no. No, I put the Wi-Fi back on. The website was called uh, theatresupport.info and it's a really cool website where they've just put together all of the um, charities that can help, if you're working in the industry, if you know that can help you out. And to, there's also a good, uh, so there's also a good flow chart that's going to help you find the right charity that's going to be able to give you the right support. So, and it, it's it's pretty simple. So if you work off stage, if you're a producer, if you're in dance, if you're in musical, if you're an actor, this flow chart's going to be really good and it's going to show you, like, which is the best charity to help you out. So, uh, so say I work um, as, say I work front of house and I go down and there's the Royal Theatrical Fund, Mad Trust, uh, Theatrical guild and it gives you all the websites so that's i thought i'm going to put it all into the into the information below because yes, i'm the one who does do. all that um so i thought other other so i'm just gonna another article i found on theater trust was they just gave you um some of the theaters that are like starting to close down so there's like uh key theater there's a uh key theater in peterborough uh charity operates it and they're struggling. It's just uh, there's like one in Leicester. Um, the you, you know the really nice theatres in Southampton. Yeah. They're struggling at the minute, and so I'm going to put that in there as well. Kenneth is struggling. And I found on um, a website called What's on Stage because you know I just went on to like yeah, and and they've got a really cool article which is like if you don't work in the industry, but obviously, as we've all realised during this whole thing. People like watching stuff, right? Yeah. And you can tell just by how mad people are getting by Hamilton going on to Disney+. Plus. People love the arts, people love the theatre, and there's a good yeah. chance that when we come out of this, there won't be... Oh, there, there will be theatres open, but you won't be able to have shows in theatres, you know. Yeah. I don't know how that one works, but, you know, whatever. So there's a really cool article, just, you know, gives gives you some simple ways that you can help and like so like the first one is obviously donate to charities that are in the industry um you can buy venue memberships which mm. helps out now and you'll you know it helps them out now and you'll get some benefits like later on um yeah like if you've got tickets don't get a refund just say you know what have it um another cool one the one i love is um they said buy buy play scripts we we know yeah. theater companies that do um like it's just as simple as that like so Paul Guys Theatre I love these guys and they do all their scripts on it's on it says Samuel French but I know Samuel French has changed its name in like a month before the pandemic. Don't know what it is but if you just you know you can get them. Um key one is write to your MPs. 
yeah. this website has gives you like another link to sort of say best way to write your MPs. Um, it's also a good way to find out, you know, if your MP is actually doing anything to help the industries you're interested in. Um, so like mine, I like my MP. I've got like the legend that is Jess Phillips. But you write to them and say, this is the problem. You need to help out this industry. And if enough of us do it, then, you know, mm. they might actually start saying, you know what? This industry helps out the UK uh, economy. What's the word? economy. That's the word. A lot. Because you know what they say, that every pound that's put in, like, to yeah. theatre, the government makes five pound out of it in tax. So you know what? Yeah, we all love it. But if I was a conservative, I'd be like, yes, let me get some of that. Um, <laughs> buy merchandise. You like we all we all love a we all love a love a um, everyone's talking about Jamie t shirt. Or yes. they do a vinyl. Get get the vinyl for that soundtrack. Um, watch shows online and donate. We all know like the yeah. Shakespeare's Globes doing it, uh, National Theatre's doing it. Mm-hmm. I think the old Vic has done a couple. Yeah, the old um, Vic, um, and also the, the Bristol House. Old Vic have Bristol um, Fish shows I've running. Hmm. Yeah. There the are Royal also, Opera House don't, don't is on YouTube. There are also independent artists who are putting on events online and they're putting their shows online. And it's just about, you know, clicking onto the hashtags on social media and you'll find those shows as well to support them. Yeah, I know. That was on. That was You're saying that that was on YouTube at one point. It was brilliant. Would it be me if I didn't throw into the conversation here? Don't forget, if you're a, if you're an actor, if you're a writer, if you're any kind of creative watching this, Equity, speak yes. to Equity. They That's will the be your saviors during this time. They are. If you didn't think it, I wasn't going to find a way to bring the unions into this, you were wrong. But it's true, and if but you, it, it is uh, true, and, and it if, is important um, to remember that they are there for exactly situations like this as well as the 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 the, the film and the and um television unions as well for those who mm. are in that industry as well yeah and if you don't know which one represents you go to union finder they will help you out <laughs> you guys jumping on my idea hey i'm the one who i've got the more high ground here sean I think, I think i think you, you may I think have won number the eight podcast. Gemma, I've thought, I've, go number on, eight go is on, the most go. important one I think I think number eight is the most important one, where it just yeah. says shout about things, and like, mm. like we all know, like it's so easy to just press that share button on Twitter, on Facebook, and if you do it enough, then people are gonna start noticing. Cause, I, cause I know on my like personally on my Facebook page, like it's it's a mix of people I know from Birmingham and then loads of people in the industry that I know from Aberystwyth Swift and when I lived in London. And the people in Birmingham have like the people I know don't really aren't really in the Birmingham scene, in not Birmingham, the theatre scene. Mm. So like if I'm, you know, sharing stuff that like people are struggling, then the people that really have no connection to that industry, even though they like watching Netflix, that you know they sometimes go to the theatre like that, they don't really know that that industry is really struggling right now and it's getting zero support from the government. So like yeah. doing something like that. It doesn't seem like, oh, I should probably donate. I should probably do that. But you're probably doing so much more than just, like, pressing that share button, being that annoying person who does, like, shares, like, retweets, like, every 10 minutes. But, you know, if they're being annoyed by what you're sharing and they're actually seeing it, which is half the problem, well, half the fight, it's not a problem. Well, for them, they'll probably think it's a problem. But you gotta get <laughs> you got to get the message out there. And that was my non-pitch. I yeah. love it because I love how inherently political it is as well. Which so it's it's apt, it's apt. I like it, and it is true. A lot of people don't realise that a lot I of just theaters wanna... are charities, and they 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 run on charitable structures and need 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 a lot more support than uh, private businesses. I do want to say one thing though. I did try. Okay, I did try to come up with an idea. I did do some <laughs> research, and the best thing I could find during my research was that Dr. Pepper came from Texas. <laughs> can, I, can I just take a moment to say, Sean, I don't think I say this enough, but I love you, dude. Thank I, you. I love you too, Sean. You've just kind of, uh, I like the way you've gone. You know what? I'm going to blow you both out of the water yeah. by not even so, pitching. 
Yeah, I know. But it I was, think the it thing was a ballsy is, move, wasn't it? Fundamentally, as Sean didn't pitch out of me and Gem, I won. End of podcast. Yes, no, I think you did. I think um, now is hey, usually hey, the time in the podcast. Gemma's is an experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So I think at this so, time um, in the podcast, Gem. we usually go to uh, smushing all of the ideas together. Um, and you know what? I genuinely, genuinely like Joe's idea. And I wasn't 100% behind my idea. I was very much in the same situation as Sean was, which was I read it and read it and read it and went, I don't know. And nor am I particularly interested in trying to celebrate and or commemorate and or bring light to this individual or his plight or his story, which fundamentally that's what theatre is about. I just, I'm not smart enough as Sean is to take the opportunity to then go, I'm going to use my voice. Yeah. Get my message out to our six viewers. I was going to say for the end of the podcast, in case we needed it, um, my really silly joke for this week, which is um, two fun facts. One being the Unionist stronghold I said about within Fredericksburg was formed of 63 German soldiers, five American soldiers and one Mexican. Also, Kyle Biederman won his um, landslide um, second house term with 69,006 votes, which means between 63 plus 5 plus 1 and 69,006, there's two opportunities for 69 jokes in my play. (laughs) (laughs) Which they shall will be made. (laughs) Noise. (laughs) Noise. Okay, so I'm gonna say, you know what? We're gonna lead. We're 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 gonna go. We're gonna lead and follow in Sean's footsteps, and we're gonna say, "Bugger it! We're not gonna follow the rest of the podcast's format. We're gonna say no to the rules, and we're going to say that the show we're gonna do, if we were to turn this person and this story into a show, would be Joe's um fro- Joe's. We are not them um." Show. Well, the the title fantastic. of it remains, as I said earlier, the quote from the song, which is 10,000 years of us against them. Yeah, 10,000 years against us, uh, with us against them. And hopefully, as most theatre will be, it will be in support of all of the artists who are currently sat there twiddling their thumbs, trying to get creative just to stay alive uh, and also keep something that they are very passionate about, we are very passionate about, and uh, most people are. So if you can, Joe, you, you, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? I can hear you. <laughs> yes, it must beat the water. <laughs> Callback points for Joe. Um, but th- thank you very much, guys, and who are listening. And if you can, please go to theatresupport.info or what's on stage. Just educate yourself. Um, go and support as much as you can. Pick your lane and help the theatre industry. Otherwise, this podcast has literally got no point. Um, so oh, We could still do it. We just, you know, we might be different day jobs before the, before the, uh, before the yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be it'll be here's the fear to pitch podcast theater used to be this thing where yes. it was people would go and sit down in their seats and a curtain would open and you would get an experience, experience. <laughs> i mean speak for yourself i quite literally have a day job that is nothing to do with the arts <laughs> All right, all right. Right. Well, on that, on that experience, I'm going to jump to Sean. You're picking the next one. So I hopefully, am. next week we still have theatre. Yeah, so what is it going to be? I just realised it's a good job. I actually did do that whole thing of like going on and getting websites because I didn't have the Wi-Fi turned on, so it would have been bad for this point. Okay. <laughs> so let's hope it's something good, something that I want to do. Ooh. 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 Okay. So oh. Oh, I've yeah. completely forgot. Like the other thing, guys, meant to do. I'm yeah. sorry. Just blowing the I'm format sorry. out of the you know what I mean? this week. I just yeah, feel like we're just oh, breaking I... all the rules today. Screw you, format. After I dropped the mic earlier, I didn't think I had to do much more. Um, so, if you, <laughs> this is the Fear to Pitch podcast, and we are uh, OFITD Productions, and we sometimes do theatre stuff and other stuff and stuff. You know, when we're feeling like it, um, and to find out what we're doing, we're basically on Instagram. On Facebook, on Twitter occasionally, if I remember, but... Mm, yeah. Um, we're 
some of our stuff's on YouTube, and if you just, you know, search OFITD or OFITD Arts, with something on, you'll find it. And um, if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I'm not really doing much at the minute. It's literally just sel selfies of me, like, saying, I haven't done anything today. Um, it's at still B. And if you want to follow Joe, who is above me right now, it is... You can do so at not Joe Ronchka, that's N-O-T-J-O-E-R-A-C-Z-K-A. Follow me for all that good, good content of me resharing articles that I've written and mostly just liking things about Black Lives Matter movement. Also, if you do want to support independent theatre creators, every week I produce an independent, an independent improvised comedy sketch show on YouTube. It's called Boat Club. And you can give us some money back if you want to pay back to independent theatre creators at ko-fi.com forward slash boat club. That On plug. that note, if Gemma, you are an Gemma, artist... it's me. No, no, it's no. me. It's me. I'm doing this bit. We had this chat at the start. I know, right. but I want to... No, I just, no, no. I want to cheer you. No, but... no. <laughs> and if you want to follow Gemma, it is... <laughs> On Instagram, it's at O-F-I-T-D underscore gem. Uh, and because we mentioned Twitter, and I forget about that most of the time as well, it's at gem Rolston. Uh, you can figure out how to spell that. But yes. I'm not going to do it. You last don't. week you were like, don't spell your name. So oh, now wow. I'm, I'm dropping the last name and, and wishing everybody luck. Good luck. It's Are row you... like row your boats. <laughs> L-S like Lima Sierra. Ton like a ton of bricks. Okay. Not like a ton of bricks. Gemma, did you want to plug anything? I don't have anything going on at the moment. Oh. I, I'm, I, it, the theatre industry shut down, John. And so is most of the film industry. I'm just sort of sat here going, oh, all right. <laughs> well, then maybe you could use that time to make the videos we discussed earlier. Um, yes, I will. So, next week's article <laughs> is... <laughs> It is <laughs> gymnastics at the 1984 Summer Olympics. Ooh. I'm seeing hairspray. Oh, it's oh, okay. the 80s? Yeah, I could do stuff for that. Um, so, yeah, Gemma, would you like to end the podcast? Ooh, that's exciting. Yes, thank you, everybody, so much for listening. It's been really fun this week. And um, do go and help support theatre and do all those good, fun things. But until next time, this is I have been Jem. This has been Joe and Sean. And thank you very much. And see you in the next one. Bye. 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 I need a catchphrase to end. <laughs>